but to Constantine McNeil and to Kenny Deary. Uh, Kenny, of course, Chief Executive of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Golda Chamber, and uh, Neil McNeil is, is a councillor and business person uh, in town on, on the line as well. Neil, good morning to you. Morning, Keith. Thank you for having your, your reaction first off this morning? Ah, well, I think we all kind of knew it was going to come. Um, unfortunately, where we saw that the peak and then the numbers increasing every week for the last number of weeks. Um, it's a pity that this didn't happen a couple of weeks earlier, where we might have been able to get on top of it. Um, the whole idea now is trying to save some type of Christmas that may come up um, when we get to reopen in December. Um, I was talking to other people on the street. I've seen grown men with tears in their eyes today, and they're not sure if they're going to survive this one. That's, that's being honest. Mm. Um, a lot of us have been preparing recently with trying to get the Leo grants and trying to get the, the websites up so that we can actually sell online um, but that's quite difficult to know. No, all non-essential services will be closing uh, from Tripoli and um, the big thing then is just hopefully that please God that up to the everybody works hard and, and, and just try and get on top of this virus so that we can maybe try and get it open again and a bit of normality uh, Kenny Deary good morning to you Morning, Keith. You, you can actually sense the emotion in uh, Neil McNeilis's voice uh, there today, and there's a lot more people like uh, Neil McNeilis, uh, perhaps listening to us today, are certainly concerned as to the next six weeks. There, there certainly is, and, and between this night and this morning, you know, we've had quite a few business people reach out, some with very practical questions around what do we do now, what are the supports that are there to try and help us through this, and I might run through those in, in a second, but. Uh, listen, I, I agree with Neil. We we expected this. I don't think maybe the six weeks was a surprise in terms of the length of it. Um, but there's there's two aspects. I think one, we as a collective have to figure out, Keith, what are the things we had planned to do over the next six weeks, and what do we not need to do. The the, the key way of of getting through this is actually reducing your contacts, reducing your contacts, num- number one, as individuals without the business hat on. I, I think the second thing that's really important is, you know, the anguish, and you're looking at it on social media all morning, uh, looking across different channels. People are genuinely worried and upset, and I, I think we just have to bring this. It's six weeks, it's 42 days. You know, we've we've been here before. November is a gloomy month, though it's a gloomier time than, than ever before. I think we just have to protect our physical and mental health, and that's for business owners and those people that, that Neil talked about this morning. People do need support. We need to reach out and help each other. Uh, in Chamber, we're going live with a mental and physical health well-being campaign starting next week with our colleagues in Medtronic and indeed many other organisations in the mental health space. Uh, so that that's something that we'll be talking more about later in the week, Keith. Uh, and then I think, you know, to the question people have, what if I'm a business owner, what are the supports, what are the tools that are there that from when we're, we're closed from Thursday onwards that we can avail of? And I think it's, it's worthwhile just mentioning if, if we have a second key, okay. there's, there's four main things that businesses can access at the minute. You know, would you believe in Galway still? There's hundreds of businesses that haven't applied for the restart grants. That deadline is closing in 10 days' time. That's money between four grand and 25 grand that I say, as I say, hundreds of businesses in Galway still haven't applied for. It's a very simple online application, so I would say don't miss that. I think the the increasing co-funding in the EWSS will be helpful. It brings it back up from 203 to 350 per week for uh, supporting, maintaining staff members. Obviously, many businesses won't be able to do that, particularly those that are closing themselves. But for those who can, that at least keeps that connection alive. Uh, people forget, you know, we still have the ability for warehousing of PAYE and BAP debts. For Dublin and Donegal, revenue extended the scheme once they went to level three. Without doubt, this is going to be extended for the country now at level five. And that allows at least a cash flow boost into accounts now. Yes, you're deferring the inevitable to June next year, but at least it creates a window. And lastly, Keith, we have this new scheme, the CRSS, that we're trying to get our head around. That's not due to come into effect in mid-November, and one thing we're calling for in Chambers Ireland today is we need that executed much quicker. We need that delivered now. But there are four tools in businesses, uh, toolboxes, and I would say look at our own channel, look at the Chamber website. We'll have all this detail up there later and try and make the most of this. So if you could just go to Galway Chamber website, you can get further details uh, from there. Uh, will they be going back to you, reckon, or will they go back to the subsidy scheme that they had uh, when this kicked off back in March, indeed, for employers as well? It's, it's, it's still called the EWSS, but the terms are more like the TWSS. At the risk of, of alphabet soup, uh, the, the terms are more favourable, Keith, so the co-contribution uh, has increased, and that's in place 
until the end of January at the higher level for now. So obviously they're giving a little bit of room in case, heaven forbid, this had to be extended and hopefully we'll never go there. So the increased participation of funding salaries for staff is from now through to the end of January. And of course that scheme in the budget last week was announced to be extended until the end of next year anyway to try and give some certainty to employers. But the increased co-funding was what we were looking for and at least we've got that. But has the criteria maintained the same? I mean, I, I, I forget the figures off the top of my head now, but... Uh, it says 30, as I understand, the 30% is still in the background. Uh, but for many businesses who, who certainly will be closed now for another six weeks, the criteria is just based on, on periods. So the fact that many will be closed over the next six weeks, they will meet the criteria again. And I would say certainly if people want to talk to ourselves in chamber, we're more than happy to take calls. Equally, stay close to your accountants and your tax advisors because cash flow is critical. And as Neil and all the other business people know, it's trying to keep enough money in the accounts to keep the doors open between now and mid next year and try and get some some degree of of free space just to stay afloat is the key thing for now. So I'd say certainly even the the revenue warehousing, yes, it's deferring a liability, but you know what? That can be dealt with next June and it's interest-free between now and then. At that stage, revenue will allow you to negotiate and an interest rate of 3% will be applied. So I would certainly ask business owners just to sit down, critically look at finances, stay close to your accountant and use the supports that are there. Now, again, when we say essential services, um, somebody said, uh, Keith, can you find out um, Can you find out if you can get carpet laid? Um, somebody wants to get a piece of carpet. Somebody else, well, I, I don't think you can, but again, I stand corrected, Kenny, on that one, and Neil as well. Uh, somebody else wants to know, will the garages be closed? Uh, as in the motor, motor dealers, will they be closed as part of this? Um, I'm, on the garages, I think garages for, let's say, mechanics, servicing cars, etc. I think that's deemed essential. Motor dealerships, my understanding is that's seen as, as retail, so I don't think so, Keith, but again, I stand corrected on that. Yeah. Uh, Neil, I know that you're heavily involved in the whole mental health side of things uh, with another charity, indeed, that you've been working on. Uh, but mental health, as, as Kenny has alluded to there, um, affects each and every one of us, but it's crucial moving forward. It's crucial no, no, going forward that everybody realises that they're not alone in this and that, you know, if, if they're not feeling good that they're actually talking about it and they're actually trying to seek some help. Um, I mean, we, we've spoken about this at in the past. I mean, one in four of us uh, will, 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 will go through a serious depressive episode in our lives. This is wouldn't be normal if you weren't feeling a bit down today over this. Mm-hmm. Um, so if, if somebody's not feeling good, to reach out and get some help first. And, and listen, can I just say, thanks to Kenny and all the work the Chamber have got done to date, they've been absolutely superb for their members and their non-members. And, and as you just heard there, Kenny is a wealth of information. So I would encourage those businesses that might be feeling down today to realise that there is help out there and there is support. Um, again, the Leo office um, are, are so, so great. But what Breeder Fox and the team have done up there, they've actually been mm-hmm. able to help so many small businesses to get those grants. Um, and, and, you know, by, by reaching out and getting those support, that also helps your mental health as well for these businesses and owners um, that are out there. And there's so many staff that just don't know will they be going back to work in the next couple of months um, when this, this mess is sort, sorted out. But what I would just encourage everybody is that, Keith, there's very, something very simple that absolutely everybody can do. Even while businesses are closed, a great number of them are going to be operating um, a click and collect and collect um, um, a, a, a process that also be doing the whole online service as well. Reach out, try and actually see can you support them through that as well because, um, you know, the likes of Amazons and all these big multinationals, they don't really give much back to go, is it? I mean, yes, they sell some pubs, but I mean, it's those businesses that are in the city centre that are the first ones always to put their hands in their pockets for when we have a festival, a GA team, a table quiz for a school and whatever like that. So I would appeal just, you know, if you can, I think it would mean an awful lot again for the mental health of these people that have actually have to close today to know that they've been thought of and that there are actually people reaching out to support them as well in every way. But there are buckets of support out there. And the one thing I would say to anybody who's facing closing the doors today is don't bottle it up. You know, as Kenny said there, even talk to the tax man. He's willing to talk to you at the moment. He understands exactly what's going on and they're willing to work with absolutely everybody. The banks included. They're all willing to work. They all realise that this is not your fault. This is something bigger and that um, hopefully when we get to reopen again that the goal will be thriving. Well, Dean, thanks for joining us. Kenny, so he wants to know is, um, again, attending a solicitor, is that seen as an essential service? We'll just have to go back and find those. Keith, can... Uh, can I would attend a solicitor 
uh, be deemed an essential are they remaining open I do believe they're an essential service indeed the, the, the last time a lot of the solicitors and legal practices were working in the background and they were doing online uh, Zoom calls with clients so I think the terminology around many of the professions is if it's seen to be urgent in the same way as let's say optometrists dentists etc if it's an urgent or exceptional case I think there's, there's leeway for meetings but otherwise they'll be working behind closed doors uh, somebody else wants to know: Can you get? Um, can you get um, to, to bring a painter in? I wouldn't worry about the painter right now. I wouldn't okay. say so. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be advocating bringing a painter into the house uh, during uh, lockdown. And uh, I think keep, the responsible the responsible piece, Keith, on, on this, and, and many people, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but many people are looking to try and circumvent the rules and see how it can how it can positively get around something. We have to think of the bigger picture here. It's how can we reduce our contacts in the next six weeks. How can we eliminate this damn thing so we're not still talking about it in January and February with more rolling restrictions? So I think for now, the, the painting and all the other bits, you know, this, it, it, the walls will still be there next year. Mm. The key thing is that we do our best to eliminate this now so that all the businesses and people can reopen in December in some sort of a, of a healthy and positive way. Uh, so I think let's not try and circumvent the rules. Let's just knock down. Uh, Kenny Deary, thank you for joining us. And indeed, Neil McNeilis.